We've seen what it's like to ride the rails with Trenitalia on the Frecciarossa 1000 in standard, premium, and business class. But there's now competition on the Italian rails with the advent of Italo, a private train operator. They don't have as wide of a route network, but they connect all the major cities exclusively with their high-speed trains. If they can compete against the state-owned entity and remain profitable, they must be doing something right. What's it like to take Italo in Prima and Club Executiva class? Let's find out on this trip from Rome to Venezia Mestre. If you haven't seen my Trenitalia video, be sure to check it out first right here as I'll be drawing a lot of comparisons as we go. Beginning operations in 2012, Italo was the first private train operator in Europe. Unlike Japan, where private rail operators often have their own dedicated tracks, Italo trains share their tracks with Trenitalia and mostly serve the same stations. They usually depart only a few minutes apart, so from a convenience standpoint, they are fundamentally the same. What that means, though, is that they have to compete on price and service, and so far, they've been successfully able to do so. Italo has four classes on their trains. Their economy class is called Smart. Smart. As according to my comments section, I'm not all that bright, I didn't take it. It's a standard economy configuration in a 2-2 layout. One of their two train types has a special car called Smart Cinema, which is the same as Smart, but with large TV screens and headphones so you can watch a movie. Which is a cool idea, but with free Wi-Fi and phones, I see less of an appeal these days. Their premium class is called Prima, which is configured in a 1-2 layout and includes beverage service. Their highest offering of business class is called Club Executiva, which is a very private half of a car at the front or rear of the train. I'll be taking that on this trip from Rome to Venice, but we'll be comparing against a trip in Prima that I took from Padova to Bologna a few days earlier. Today I was actually traveling from Rome to Venice Marco Polo Airport, I'll explain why at the end of the video, so you've got to ask whether it was better to fly or take the train. It's just me, so I can't have a race with someone, but I tracked the flight, so we'll see who would have won. I arrived at Roma Termini, first thing in the morning. Like many of the touristy destinations in Italy, it can be a bit of... Wretched hive of scum and villainy. If you look like a hapless tourist, you'll make an easy target. Walk with purpose, the station's not that confusing. As we go in this review, I'll keep a running tally of each point on whether Italo or Trenitalia wins. For Italo, Club Executiva tickets can get you access to the Italo Lounge, while Prima tickets can access the lounge for a small fee. By contrast, Trenitalia's business class, the most applicable comparison, doesn't get access to the lounge unless you book the private room for four people or their executive class, which is really first class. So that's one point to Italo right there for lounge access. The Italo lounge has some red fake leather chairs, charging ports, and pictures of their trains. It was a bit spartan with some food and drink options. There was an attendant who insisted on serving herself, likely due to COVID. It's nothing amazing, but with all the craziness of Italian train stations, it was nice to have a quiet refuge before the trip. There's also Wi-Fi that worked just fine. The track was posted about 20 minutes prior to departure, and I headed down. Roma Termini has boarding gates before the platforms, and Club Executiva comes with fast track boarding. It's nice to not have to queue, but for this early morning train it was hardly necessary. I don't believe that Trenitalia Business Class comes with any sort of fast track, so that's another point to Italo, though I could be wrong on this one. This train was an ETR 675 with a top speed of 250 km per hour, which is slightly slower than the older Italo stock of AVG trains, 275 km per hour, or the Frecciarossa 1000's 300 km per hour. The main difference is that this train is a tilting pendolino train, while the Frecciarossa trains are not. So that's one point to Trenitalia on speed, and another point to Italo for the comfort of tilting trains. Club class was at the very front of the train. I boarded through the Prima class car, so let's briefly talk about those seats first. Prima class seats are in a 1-2 layout, while Trenitalia's premium class is in a 2-2 layout, so that's a win for Italo. They also recline, while Trenitalia's do not, so that's another point. 
The seats are a stylish, newer design that I like much more than Trenitalia's. They are also mostly in pairs rather than quads, so it's easier if you're traveling as a couple, but harder to get four seats together if you're a family. Solo travelers can enjoy a solo seat. Like Trenitalia, there's power outlets and footrests. I really enjoyed my trip in Prima Class, but let's move on to Club Executiva. At first glance, it didn't seem that much better than Premium. It's a small private cabin with only a handful of seats. Like Trenitalia's Salotino, there's two quads in mini rooms for privacy. If you're traveling as a family, that's my recommendation. The seats have a charging port, reading light, and a tray in the armrest rather than the seat in front of you like in Prima. Also like in Prima, the seat reclines a bit with a lever on the right. We pulled out five minutes late, which hey, is the best performance so far, though spoilers don't get too excited yet. Five minutes after that, we pulled into Roma Tiburtina, before getting up to speed as we zipped through the countryside. Service began by being offered a coffee, a beverage, and a choice of baked goods. I went with an apricot croissant. In terms of meal quality, Italo definitely gets the win here, with a fresh baked pastry beating trail mix and a bagged focaccia. I also need to award another point for service. On Trenitalia, the service was very rote and you only got it once. On this Italo trip, the conductor and cabin staff were incredibly friendly and proactive, constantly offering drinks and snacks to everyone during the entire journey. They made it feel welcoming, and that has to count for a lot. Prima Class only gets basic beverages, but I saw them constantly wheeling the cart back and forth to that class over and over again as well. Italo has free Wi-Fi on board for all classes, and it was faster than the speeds on Trenitalia. But in a rather petty move, Italo's Wi-Fi blocks the Trenitalia site. Funny, I know, but it can be rather annoying. Italo has a more limited route network, and on an earlier trip, I was trying to look up connecting Trenitalia times to see what train I could take next. But no, that information might make me regret my ticket purchase decision on Italo. I can't really think of a rationale. We slowed as we approached Florence, having made up the time, but then we stopped due to congestion and became delayed again. Now is as good a time as any to discuss operational reliability. As I said in my Trenitalia video, I took eight trains on this trip to Italy, and all of them were late. But I don't think Italo or Trenitalia are better than the other here. The rails between the major cities are just plain congested. I'm also skeptical of the benefits of Trenitalia's higher speeds in practice, as if a slower train is ahead of it, it will also have to slow down. We saw this on the leg from Florence to Rome, where the Frecciarossa 1000 was only hitting 243 km per hour, likely behind a slower train and unable to hit 300 km per hour. We arrived an hour and 40 minutes after departing Rome in Florence. As Firenze Santa Maria Novella is a terminal station, we changed directions as we left. Then we sat for another 20 minutes waiting for clearance. We hit 247 km per hour in the tunnels on the way to Bologna, arriving 55 minutes later, while my trip on the Frecciarossa only took 33 minutes, where we didn't have to wait. We arrived in Ferrara 17 minutes late, 3 hours and 10 minutes after Rome. Here's a difference for you, Italo stops in Ferrara, while the Frecciarossa stops in Robigo instead. Then came Padova, still 17 minutes late. We only hit 218 km per hour on the final stretch to Mestra, but we arrived only 13 minutes late, 4 hours and 2 minutes after departing Rome. But if you recall I said at the beginning of the video I was going to Marco Polo Airport, and because the train was delayed I missed the connecting bus and had to wait 30 minutes for the next one. I ended up arriving at Marco Polo 4 hours and 49 minutes after departing Rome. So would the flight have won? I can look at the hypothetical. The train from Roma Termini to Leonardo da Vinci Airport takes 32 minutes. I'm the kind of guy who gets to the airport two hours beforehand, I know, I know. The flight was booked at 46 minutes, but was delayed and ended up taking an hour 10 from pushback to arrival. Plus 20 minutes to deplane and baggage claim. That's 4 hours and 2 minutes. The plane wins slightly, but if I hadn't missed the bus, it would have been a tie. Even if you shave off an hour at the airport, it's competitive at the very least. 
If you were actually going to the city of Venice, it becomes even more significant, as from the airport you need to walk for 20 minutes to the boat docks, then take the Aliaguna, which takes 50 minutes to the stop closest to the train station. That's 5 hours and 12 minutes. My train to Venezia Santa Lucia was scheduled at exactly 4 hours and ended up at 4 hours and 13 minutes. So again, if you're traveling within Italy, high-speed trains sure beat flying. You don't have to worry about security, checking bags, and can relax in comfortable seats with free Wi-Fi while watching the countryside go by. It's a no-brainer to me. But why was I going to the Venice airport and not the city, you may ask? Well, I did end up going to Venice, of course, but I needed to go to the Venice airport to rent an automatic car and start driving, for I had my sights set on something a little higher. So Italo versus Trenitalia, they're both great. I think both the hard and soft products are better on Italo, but it's not a deal breaker. If the prices and times are equivalent, I'd say go with Italo, but it's not worth a huge price premium. Speaking of premium, was Club Executiva better than Prima Class? Well, yes, but not by much. I honestly think Prima Class is the sweet spot for best Italian high-speed rail experience. You get a 1-2 configuration, a better seat that reclines, faster Wi-Fi, and repeated beverage services. The more private space, pastries, and extra snacks in Club Executiva are great, but if you're on a budget, I think it's fine to skip them. I can't comment on the economy class smart, but during the busy summer, I think it's fine to splurge a few extra euros for Prima in general. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click that button and please subscribe for my more traditional flight reviews as well as some occasional train content like this. I'll see you next time on a brand new A220 flying in business class on Air France with an amazing view of Venice.